As the economy falls apart and hosts are going out of business, all of Airbnb's summer release updates are starting to look more and more like they had an eerie amount of foresight. And you can leave it to Reventure Consulting to give you the data, which he did. Such a well-timed video. In this video, I'm going to show you Airbnb's summer release features that prove that they are expecting a recession big in the industry and how you can use that to your advantage. Because, of course, some people are going to stay in business. Actually, a lot of people will stay in business. In this world of short-term rentals, it's the bottom that always falls out, or is it? Let's get into the video. Welcome back, YouTube world. Yes, lost the beard temporarily. I'm growing it back because I dearly miss it. I was in Chicago for a music festival called Heatwave, and an influencer dared me to shave it off. Probably more on that story later. But also, I just got back from Electric Forest, beautiful music festival. And if you don't know me, you know that I've done all the things that I've done because music is life. And so I love music festivals and writing music. I'll tell you more about that later too, but let's get into the point of this video, which is that Airbnb has released some features that are designed to try to capture revenue in a down market. And why would Airbnb make down market features if they weren't preparing for a down market, right? Some of these things are really smart though. What Airbnb is doing is allowing them to capture revenue that I don't think anybody else could capture, allowing them to further expand the amount of revenue that they can create, which is good for hosts in some ways. And let me show you one to start. Airbnb rooms is a highly controversial topic matter that a lot of hosts just don't like. A lot of hosts with entire spaces, they don't want to rent their room to just one person and then have three other bedrooms that they also have to manage. They don't want to run a hostel. But here's the thing. Airbnb knows that Verbo is not going to create a feature like this. Booking.com is not going to create a feature like this. And Marriott Homes and Villas, absolutely not. And so as they compete with more online travel agencies or OTAs, they're trying to create new revenue streams, new blue ocean markets, new ways to provide value. This doubles down though. Imagine that you have a luxury property that can get $800 a night or $1,200 a night. In some markets, this is totally possible. But let's say the market starts to dry up. You'll still get some of those bookings because not everybody's going broke, right? So some people will book your property. What do you do with the other dates that normally would have gotten booked? You could drop your rates. I teach that pricing strategy, how to effectively drop your rates to the right price and maximize your revenue at 100% occupancy. Do this all the time. You guys just missed pricing school, which the replays are still available. Link is in the description. But even with a perfect pricing strategy, if a market is down enough, you would have to drop your price so low that it is no longer worth it to run out your property. Some of you on principle don't want to go below maybe $200 a night. Some of you know that below $200 a night, you're going to have a party risk, things like this. What you can do what Airbnb was smart enough to create for you is a doubling down on the rooms feature, which is historically one of the main things that Airbnb was known for when they first got started. Remember, Airbnb was air mattress, bed and breakfast. So this is good for the brand. This is somewhere Verbo's not gonna follow. And this is something that you can take advantage of if you do this right. This is an entirely different business model. And let me give you the skinny on why. When somebody stays in one of your rooms, you want them to stay for two, five, seven days max. Right? You don't want them to settle in. You just want them to be transient in and out. They have to have access to a kitchen or the living room. This is Airbnb Rooms' new protocol. So you're going to have a entanglement of guests at time. You're going to have four or five different rooms that will all have door locks with individual unique codes, and they're going to be easy to identify so nobody's trying to get into the wrong bedroom, for example. And these people will interact with each other. And people who book private rooms are more likely to cohabitate just fine. This is something I think a lot of you hosts are scared of, but if you've ever went to stay at a hostel, you'll know that this is true. What I would like you to do is go stay at some hostels, go travel. One of my favorite hostels is Selena. I stayed in Costa Rica at one of theirs, a couple places in Mexico. I just stayed at one here in the States even, and they're just expanding across the world in a really, really cool way. And what they're trying to do is create this brand where backpackers who travel all over always stay at their hostel because there's this level of trust. Right? Imagine Sonder, which we've talked about, but for hostels. So by doing this type of Airbnb rooms feature, you have people who are used to staying in their one space and then having some roommates or some neighbors in the house. This can definitely work. The main thing that you would have to do to make this work, which a lot of you won't do this, but for those of you interested, you'd let your whole house be available into the future, into perpetuity forever. And then over the next 10 or 14 days, and that's it, no more than 14 days or 20 days into the future max, you let people book the private rooms. You don't want them competing with the whole home. What is interesting about this, though, is this is non-competitive. A group that books an entire place, like a group of 11 or 15, they book far future. The backpacker, nomadic, transient, single person who books a private room is booking very much last minute. You're not going to get a group of 12 people booking in two days. Typically not. 
So breaking up your four bedroom house into four different rooms where you can actually collect more money per room than you would if you gave half off in your house, this is a viable option. But the housekeeping protocols and how you handle guest interactions, guest disputes is all something that you would have to build out. So it is going to be work, but that's the thing about an industry like this is the reason why you're here first off is because you're doing work that other people aren't willing to do. Question is, is are you willing to do the work for private rooms as well? Segwaying from this tangent where Airbnb is doubling down on a revenue stream that has largely been overlooked by the Airbnb community, they've done other things too. And some of these were actually pre-summer release. You guys might recognize that when you get a cancellation, Airbnb might think it's your fault and then Airbnb charges you money. You'll see that there's this grayed out bar on your calendar and there's gonna be a negative number. Airbnb has been charging hosts for cost of cancellation and claiming that it's to relocate guests as expenses associated with relocating guests. But I don't think Airbnb has done anything special in the world of reaccommodating guests where there's cancellations. They haven't done anything new, anything cool. I think they're just pocketing the money. It could be a COVID-19 level fiasco, depending on what the language is in the contracts that they made us agree to. They did try to claim that it's because it costs money to make guests happy, and so they're charging it to us, but I really don't think they're actually doing that. Airbnb has also lowered fees. Their fees for monthly stays are more lean, which means that they're trying to push into the multi-month stay market more, which means they are trying to create more cost efficiency in the multi-month market thing. They understand that a single reservation for multiple months is a lot of money as far as service fees go. So they've optimized this considering that there's not as much churn, they don't need as much margin, and that'll keep hosts like us allowing multi-month stays on Airbnb instead of going to Furnished Finder or to other places like that or doing direct bookings. You guys know Mark from Boostly, go get with him about direct bookings. I really need to send him an invoice for talking about him, I swear. But think of it this way. If Airbnb is willing to let go of revenue preemptively as a measure of prevention against losing us to other channels, that is because they are expecting a drawdown in revenue. I just don't see it any other way. Here's another thing that you can take advantage of because lots of hosts are super lazy. If you're watching this video, you're one of 1% of the community that watches educational videos on how to do short-term rentals. You're top 1%, congratulations. Airbnb released in the summer release a compare to other listings feature. What this does is on map view, it'll show you listings in your immediate area that fit your general type of listing style listing product. And it will show you you know, what's booked and what's not booked and what price brackets they're booked and not booked at. Take that word salad and let's unwind that. You can go look for any day of the week or days of the week to find out which competitors are not booked and what they're charging. If you're not booked and your direct competition is not booked, you can see what their reviews are, what their photos are, what their prices are, and you can decide if you want to be priced more or less than them based on whether or not lots of people are booked or lots of people are still available whether your competition sucks or you've got good competition with open inventory. Because if you've got good competition with open inventory and plenty of competition with open inventory, then you need to be dropping your prices. But if this is something that you do and no one else does, this allows you to achieve something that I call price perfection, where all of your competitors are at the whim of the gods of travel to get booked or not based on their prices and kind of like a blind pricing strategy. I did just do a two-day pricing webinar series called Pricing School. The replays are still available. Like I said, link is in the description and probably a QR code just for fun. Screenshot that and find your way to that. If you want to learn all about pricing strategy, I would love to have the ego to tell you that I'm the best in the world and not feel weird for saying it. But I really do think that as far as public education goes for revenue management, there probably isn't another place that you get as much that I can teach. So I'm proud of that and I want you to take it if you really care about pricing strategy. Okay, commercial over, let's keep going. Airbnb tweaked their SEO again. They do it every release. During the winter release, and that's why I did re-algorithm and then summer release, they did it again. Yes, I'm doing another re-algorithm July 10th. You guys probably already know that. And what happens is Airbnb will tweak kind of how aggressive their algorithm is and what they care about in order to make sure that the best hosts or the most aligned hosts are the ones making the money. If you recall, Airbnb had a bug where that price filter had this thing where it would clip off the most luxury listings. Well, that is because they made changes in the summer release that include like compare features that allow you to compare against other listings and even based on amenities and all this other stuff, they'll tell you what the average price is for almost everything. The reason why they're doing all of this and why they made the compare to other listings features in the first place is because they are trying to encourage you to be more price competitive. They understand that this market has some form of race to the bottom element at times, especially for smaller listings. And they want you to have access to that data so that way you can give their guests a better price if you feel like you need to. If guests pay less for a space, 
Airbnb's reputation goes back up and they're counting on you to make that happen. In the winter release specifically, they started to bottleneck listings. I'm absolutely certain this is how this worked, is they took all the listings that they thought were the best for Airbnb and during the winter bust, they pushed as much traffic to the ones that performed within certain metrics so that they would stay full and all the ones that were like C minus students or worse, they started to direct traffic away from them because hosts were going to quit. They were always going to quit when the money was no longer good enough. So they wanted to control which hosts would want to quit by just funneling out the bad ones. It's good business. It makes sense. But even with that, they did not expect the amount of oversupply that they had post COVID and other market conditions, recession imminent. They weren't prepared for it. So even some of my luxury property friends here in Dallas are making less money than they used to. And even though their listings are profitable, they are not happy with how profitable they are because they are used to making more money for the same amount of work. Imagine you had a job where a boss gave you a demotion. They ask you to do the same amount of work, but they're paying you $20,000 less a year. You probably would quit. Just on principle, you'd quit. This is quite interesting. Across the country, even across the world, like Reventure Consulting's video with all the data shows, revenues are down up to 50% a lot of places. And if revenues are down per host, there are plenty of hosts, even good ones, that are experiencing a little bit of that squeeze. And if they didn't like hosting that much anyway, but they did it for the money, now is one of those times where they're like, you know what? I don't even like it for the money because I was making more money and people will leave. People will quit. People are quitting. So what does that mean for you? Well, this is a perfect time to look for opportunities to pick up where other people are abandoning their posts. I know I was way wrong like four years ago when I said the housing market's gonna pull back and you know everybody's gonna lose money and blah, 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 and arbitrage is awesome. But I didn't see COVID coming and nobody else did either. And what COVID did is it caused a lot of people to wanna have their own place because they were sick of having roommates and people moved to rural areas and now they're moving back to cities and caused all this volatility. And a lot of people made a lot of money in real estate because hard assets started to climb precipitously since COVID, right? We've had the stock market boom that nobody thought we would have, like all this rebounding, right? So timing the market, I'm not the best at that. But the mechanics of this is if a bunch of hosts put their inventory on the market and interest rates go down, people are willing to sell the property to find a new one. But Airbnb hosts are selling because they want out. People are selling because they need to cash, all sorts of reasons. There are so many levers that are going to cause real estate inventory to hit the market. And according to Reventure Consulting's video, mortgage applications are already at an all-time low, while apartment builds are at like an all-time high. This kind of stuff is going to affect the market. So what happens is when people get scared and they leave, they will leave at a loss. They will lose money on the way out because they just want out. Have you ever been in a losing stock trade and you just want it out? You just exit the trade no matter what, just get me out? That happened to me. I just lost $130,000 shorting Tesla before it went from 194 to 275 bucks. I lost my tail. Unfortunately, I wasn't one of those guys that was like, just get me out. I hold on to things too long and I should have got out, but I lost my tail. A lot of people freaked out and sold at whatever price. That was probably still better than what I did. But to take the lesson here, I've always said that in arbitrage, you make money two ways. You make money from the guest, the Airbnb, Verbo, direct guest. You're going to make money from the traveler. But in a volatile market, you make money from the landlord, from the person who needs the occupancy filled. And right now, a lot of cities are dealing with all-time high vacancies too. I think this is a great world for arbitrage. And that's why I think you're seeing a lot of like influencers talk about arbitrage now. Even the guys that are like, I buy properties, I build properties, blah, blah, blah. A lot of them are going, oh, I'm going to arbitrage now. Why are they flipping? Why are they flipping? Because they're flipping to the opportunity that's going to work. We're all business people. I will tell you that in a year or two or wherever, I will be in the business of buying properties, probably, when the opportunity is actually truly good. I've never been a buyer, right? And if I knew COVID was coming and the properties were going to skyrocket, of course I would have bought property, but I didn't see that coming. So I missed that bus. Speaking of which, I bought a jail bus. I'll tell you about that in the next video. But right now is the season for arbitrage. Even the guys who love to buy properties are doing arbitrage because volatility is so good for arbitrage. And Airbnb is expecting a recession, which means that luxury properties are going to suffer and customers want to be more cost conscious, which means that you need a more cost effective product, more cost competitive product, which means studio apartments, one bedroom apartments, where you have housekeepers by the hour, another thing that I've taught for years, and not having a co-host, not losing that 20, 25%, another thing that I've really been on you guys about, you guys do all that, you'll be more cost competitive than anyone else, and you will crush the industry. Because what happens is then when all these luxury guys who have co-hosts, when they sell their properties because mortgage rates dropped and they could flip into some other place and do long-term rentals because they can finally get out of their short-term rental and they were burned by short-term rentals, when everybody quits and you're still standing, revenues will go up because there's less properties for us to share the pie. The biggest problem with revenues being down 
is that revenues are up 10 to 20%, but supplies up 50%. And so with that said, there's more hosts sharing a slightly larger pie, but the pie is smaller relative to all of the hosts that are left. So with that said, guys, um, go to rockygeech.com forward slash events if you want access to pricing school, if you want access to the real algorithm too. I'm going to be doing one on uh, market research. I have this wick sicked wish list trick that I just learned from the summer release. That's nuts. It's totally changed the way that I do market research, like in a big way. It's transformed market research. It makes their DNA look like trash. Trust me, it does. Maybe you'll see that in a month. Thank you so much for watching this video. I love you guys. This is one of my favorite things to do is talk at you. And if you want to talk some more, come down in the comments and talk to me in the comments because I'll be there. And as always, until the next video, I will see you on the other side.